Welcome to more course on introduction to proteogenomics. This is Dr. Bing Jang's hands on session on web gstart. Web gstart or web based gene set analysis toolkit is a functional enrichment analysis web tool. Dr. Bing Jang will briefly describe about the software and its three well established and complementary methods for enrichment analysis including over representation analysis ORA, gene set enrichment analysis GSEA and network topology based analysis NTA. He will also discuss about different parameters of each method, input gene list and run the analysis. So, let us welcome Dr. Bing Jiang for today's session. I am going to introduce um, two tools um, that have been developed in my lab, um, mostly for pathway and the network based analysis and also for uh, using these tools to analyze um, data that has been generated by TCGA and the CPTEC uh, cancer programs. So one of the tools is called WebGestalt, the other one is called Linked Omics. So, uh, I think uh, uh, I will give a little bit of structure for this hands on session. So, first I want to give a very brief introduction to the web guest dot tool uh, and then we can have some practice and then uh, we can have a little bit break if you want uh, or we can go to the uh, linked omics introduction and the hands on part. Um, because I, I think the uh, underlying method has been described both in uh, some of the cousins talk and also my talk yesterday. So, the introduction can go very quickly. So, uh, for the web get start, so uh, this actually was my first uh, um, uh, bioinformatics project and uh, it was a tool I created when I was a postdoc. Um, so, the motivation is that I, when you do RNA-seq or proteomics and uh, this high throughput technologies, actually when I started this I was doing microarray at that time. Uh, and then usually you um, need to do like uh, differential expression analysis and uh, clustering analysis, this type of things, right. And uh, eventually you end up with a list of genes that are of pot uh, possible interest. Uh, like a list of differentially expressed genes or through clustering analysis um, introduced by Dr. Manny um, during the previous lectures. Uh, you are going to get clusters of genes that have similar expression pattern and you want to explore those genes. Um, and uh, one way to do this is to leverage the information we already have um, about the pathways. So, uh, um, and the typical pass, uh, first uh, in order to do this you have, have to have some pathway definition right and like the pathway uh, databases or actually it's, it can be also like loosely defined functional categories or just any gene sets. Um, and then there are two types of analysis over representation analysis and the gene set enrichment analysis I think we already talked about this yesterday in uh, Cousins lectures. So, in web guest dot, um, so we have collected a lot of um, pathways, functional categories and the other types of gene sets. Um, so, it, um, basically it is from different databases or through some computational analysis. I won't uh, because it is too small I do not think you will be able to see it, but maybe you have the uh, lecture note. Um, so, you should be able to read on your computer, uh, but it can be separated into different categories. Um, and in total there is uh, a very large number of gene sets that can be used for your analysis. Um, for the over representation analysis just a quick reminder, uh, you have a list of genes of interest. Let us say you do an RNA-seq or proteomics experiment and then you get a list of differentially expressed genes and then you want to compare with a, a gene set or a pathway group uh, to see whether there is uh, any association between them. For example, we want to compare this with the development of uh, gene ontology and then you can do the overlap 
and then you can count the number of overlapping genes, right? If you see over, uh, any overlaps, that indicates some of your genes are involved in this biological process. Um, but the question is whether this is um, enriched the representation of that um, uh, category or not, you don't know, right? And then what you can do is to randomly sample the same number of genes as you can uh, uh, in from uh, next 581 genes randomly sampled from the proteome you studied, for example, and then you can do the overlap. And the, for example, here you have, you observe the 98 uh, gene overlapping here, but only 65 in a random experiment. And then you can say, okay, I have more gene overlapping genes than here, but is that significant or not? In order to do that, you do the uh, Fisher's exact test, or it can, uh, it's also called hypergeometric test. And I think Carson already talked about this yesterday. Um, and then you can get a p value that can help you to know whether it's significant or not. And uh, because when you use gene ontology or other databases to do this type of analysis, you are testing many different uh, go biological processes or pathways at the same time. So you also need to do the multiple test adjustment in order to justify your observation. So I, I want to mention the limitation of this approach. Uh, first, I, you have to define what is differentially expressed, what is not differentially expressed. That means you have to set up a cutoff. For example, people usually use uh, first discovery uh, rate 0.01, let's say, or 0.05 as a cutoff. But the question is, I, uh, how about the gene right below the cutoff, like 0.011? I mean, is that not useful at all? Probably not, right? But setting this cutoff is very arbitrary. Uh, and secondly, after you set the cutoff, for example, for all the remaining genes, genes uh, with a p-value or FDR less than 0.01, uh, you consider them as the same, right? But actually, they are not the same. Some of them may have a tenfold change, but others may only have a twofold change. They are not the same, but if you do this approach, basically you consider all the significant genes the same. So that is a major limitation. And the gene setting enrichment analysis basically addresses uh, this limitation. Um, it uses a rank list in order to do this. So basically, um, instead of looking at the overlapping, it uses data from all the genes. And basically, you can rank all the genes from the most downregulated to the most upregulated. And then for a gene set of interest, you can look at the location in the ranked list. If there is no association between the rank list and uh, the gene set, and you would expect all the genes to be randomly distributed or evenly distributed across the rank list. But in this case, for example, you see kind of the uh, over representation of these genes at the top of ranked list. Uh, that's why um, you may think, well, something, um, th there might be an association between this gene set and this ranking. Um, and uh, to do that, um, uh, we use a GSEA uh, statistic, or it's a uh, statistic test derived from the Comograph uh, Smolov test. I think Carson already talked about this today, so I won't go into the detail. Uh, but anyway, from this, um, and then you can generate the random um, simulation, and then you get some uh, random distribution, and then you can get a p-value. Again, if you do this for multiple gene sets, like all the Go categories, all the pathway databases, you need to do the multiple test adjustment. Um, this is um, better in a way than the uh, um, uh, um, over-representation analysis. Uh, but still, uh, there are certain limitations like um, it relies on existing knowledge on the pathways and databases. But uh, of course, I mean, uh, li uh, knowledge on the pathway and, uh, and the uh, gene ontology, I mean, those annotations are still limited. For a lot of genes, we don't really know a lot about their functions. Uh, and also, it treats one pathway uh, as a um, separate a separated entity, it ignores the crosstalk between the pathways. But we know, I mean, although you can consider that as a relatively independent unit, uh, they still talk to each other. So as I uh, talked yesterday, um, every protein is actually linked in the uh, cell system. So 
Um, that's why I, the second type of approach is to map your data to the network and then do some network based analysis um, like the, uh, we talked about a few different methods yesterday and uh, we also mentioned about this pathway interaction databases and uh, the uh, uh, basis for using this, uh, this type of analysis is uh, uh, proteins like close to each other in the network tend to have similar functions uh, and uh, uh, yeah so basically we talked about a, a few different methods and uh, um, so in the web guest thought we basically implemented two uh, approaches one is a module based approach basically for each network we pre-compute the modules and then we treat each module as a um, gene set and then you can do the enrichment analysis against those predefined modules or uh, you can use a diffusion based approach um, and uh, uh, that will allow you to do gene prioritization. So this is a um, kind of an overview of the web thought. So the goal is to translate a list of genes uh, of interest into some biological and pathway level understanding and uh, the system can support um, 12 organisms. Um, so not only human or mouse, but uh, other model organisms can also be supported. I talked to some of the students uh, in the audience and uh, I know some of you don't actually work in human, although uh, all the examples today I'm going to give will be in human, but if you work in uh, C. elegans, for example, you will be able to use this resource as well. Um, and we support a lot of gene I, uh, different types of gene IDs. For example, whether you use Unipro or whether you use Ensemble to do the proteomics database search, you will be able to use this without worrying about the system don't recognize your ID. Um, and then um, there are a total of more than 100,000 uh, gene sets, uh, different ty um, types of gene sets that can be used to do your analysis and coming from the gene ontology, from different data, uh, pathway databases, uh, as I said from different types of protein-protein interaction networks or from the gene uh, cancer derived gene co-expression networks uh, and uh, also like phenotype associated gene sets, drug related gene sets, etc. Um, and we support all three types of analysis, like the uh, over-representation analysis, GSEA, and the network topology analysis, which is, I mean, basically the um, diffusion-based analysis. And then the output is um, very interactive. Uh, and this was based on a figure uh, in the 2017 paper. Um, but uh, today, I'm going to uh, what I'm going to demo is uh, 2019. It's not 2019 yet, but we are preparing for that paper. So um, it's um, actually this is my first demo of that new system, and you guys will be the first uh, uh, group of people to know this new system. It's still the beta version, but I think it's quite stable, and you guys should be able to use it now. Um, yeah. So um, I put some hands-on uh, next step-by-step -step guide about the examples we are going to go through today. Um, so you can go to the workshop area and uh, have everyone got that uh, fi uh, PDF file or Word file about um, the steps to do the analysis. So yeah, let's get started. It's a web application, so you don't need to install anything or download anything. You just go um, use your web browser to go to the right URL and then you should be able to get started. Um, I would recommend you to use uh, Chrome as a uh, browser uh, because most of our developers are, sorry, I don't know what is causing the, yeah, most of our developers are using the Chrome as a, a primary um, web browser for the development. So it's the best tested in that browser. But if you use Safari or in, uh, I think there is a guidance at the bottom of this if you use Google Chrome, Safari, or um, uh, the latest version of the IE, I think you should be fine. Um, but Chrome is free, so I think you, anyone can download and use Chrome if possible. So let's go to the WebGuest.org uh, website. And uh, 
uh, you can either just uh, type in the URL you have, the 2019 one, or you just Google Web Gestalt and then go to the 2019 um, beta version, and you should see this interface. And uh, in the first example, uh, I will show you and uh, how we can use Web Gestalt to understand the list of genes that are associated with uh, colon cancer. Um, so uh, it's already pre-configured as a ORA sample run. So let's say you click on this ORA sample run, it will automatically fill in all, all of the parameters and also upload a gene list. Um, so this is a list of genes uh, related to colon cancer. It's, uh, uh, we got this list from uh, another tool developed in the lab called glad for you uh, gene list automatically derived for you. So that one, so basically you can type in anything you are interested in and then it will give you the list of genes that are related to the concept you are interested in. It could be a disease, could be a um, biological process or could be uh, something you are interested in. But anyway, this time we get uh, 487 genes uh, that are related to colon cancer from that tool. So uh, we can go through the parameter setting to uh, just try to understand uh, what this means. So the first one is easy, it's select organism of interest because these are the genes from the human, right? So you select uh, Homo sapiens, but if you have other data from other um, uh, organisms uh, in your future research, you can select uh, the right uh, organism um, in the future studies. And then select method of interest. Uh, uh, we're going to do over-representation analysis because we don't have a rank list. This is the type of situation that you have a list of genes without any statistical metric or anything that you can use to rank them. For example, if you do a clustering and then you get a list of genes just in that cluster um, and then there is no, not really a rank, right? Then you cannot use GSEA and so we choose the ORA. And uh, we will just use a gene ontology um, biological process for this basic analysis. Uh, but here you can see, in addition to gene ontology, the functional databases related to pathways, and network modules, uh, disease related gene sets, drug related gene sets, uh, phenotype related gene sets, and uh, genes in different chromosome locations, or some community contributed gene sets. And for example, uh, some of you are interested in certain types of studies like in infectious disease or other diseases and you may sometimes have um, a list of genes that you are interested in and you want to contribute to the community, allow other people to test their data against your gene set, right? Um, this is why we created this uh, community contributed. These are uh, from some labs, they want to share their gene sets to let others to uh, compare their new uh, studies against their gene sets. Um, so let's see gene ontology and the biological process for today. And then the gene ID type uh, here, what we have is gene symbol. But as you can see, we support a lot of different uh, gene IDs from all the different types of microarray IDs to uh, uh, the illumina array IDs. And then uh, for proteins, we have the ensemble, RefSeq, Unipro, um, all these different types of ideas. But this one particular one we're using is gene symbol. And the uh, reference gene list in this case, I mean, we use a gene, uh, all the protein coding genes in the genome uh, because the, um, this was basically a list come from the literature search and we don't really know what is the uh, space they used to, and, um, we just consider every gene has been uh, probably have some opportunities to be studied. But in your own research in the future, it's very important to consider what to use as a reference uh, set for enrichment analysis. For example, if you do RNA-seq, it might be safe to use all the genes because I mean, RNA-seq is kind of unbiased. You get access to uh, in, uh, investigate all of the genes in the genome. But let's say if you use uh, uh, proteomics, uh, specifically, I mean, um, usually you can only get uh, part of the 
proteins. A lot of the proteins you didn't identify. So, when you say you identify 100 differentially expressed proteins, um, that's out of the maybe 10,000 proteins you quantified or even sometimes 8,000 or 3,000 right. So, a lot of proteins you didn't have the opportunity to uh, get the statistics and then you should limit your uh, search space or the uh, background reference space to those proteins you can actually analyze. This is very very important I review a lot of papers and uh, sometimes people just use the uh, for example, in a lot of proteomic studies um, they use a uh, uh, complete uh, uh, like all every all the genes in the proteome as a reference that is not correct, because that will very likely you can easily identify for example, ribosome or uh, those type of highly abundant proteins as enriched, but it is just because those proteins has better chance to be detected not because they are differentially expressed. Just to be careful in uh, selecting your reference gene list. Upload gene list yeah here yeah. Uh, this one was from I mean, uh, because we clicked on the sample run it is automatically filled. Uh, from the I mean as I said from the 417 uh, genes from the data uh, another tool, but in the future let us say if you have a 100 gene symbols you just copy and paste here or you can uh, go here and you can save this in a te uh, text file and, uh, uh, and then choose the file and then you can upload as a file as well. There are two options either you can just copy and paste. Uh, or you can save that as a file and upload as a text file, but make sure when you upload as a file your file extension has to be dot txt and then you do not want to have any special characters in your file name. Um, and the for the advanced parameter settings um, the minimum number of genes in the category we do not want to look at the categories that have only one or two genes because that is not very interesting right. We also do not want to look at the gene uh, uh, ontology terms with maybe more than 2000 genes uh, because those are too broad to be meaningful. And then for the multiple test adjustment we choose uh, uh, Benjamin Hodgeberg um, um, Correction. So, this is one of the most popular or uh, I recommend just use this method for multiple test adjustment it is less conservative than the bufferoni for example. And then for st uh, st uh, significance level uh, there are two options here and um, you can use a FDR cutoff for example, 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 or but when you do the first round of analysis. I uh, usually I cho uh, choose the top 10 or top and uh, you can change the number, but so this way you can always get some result back like uh, you know what are the most enriched the term look like. And then because sometimes if you pick for example, 0 0.01 and the none of the terms come back as significant and then you end up with uh, empty result set that is not interesting right. So, and sometimes if you, you uh, your difference is really huge you end up with thousands of in, um, enriched terms and uh, then you cannot uh, comprehend all those either. So, uh, do the top 10 as the first step can give you a sense and how strong the signal is in your data set. And the number of categories realized in the report. So, I think we are uh, we generate results for all the significant gene sets, but uh, for example, in this case we are going to realize the results in a DAG. Um, if the number of gene sets is too big then for example, if you have 1000 uh, significant sets and then the realization will be too crowded and you would not be able to see anything. So, uh, that is why we need to set a um, cutoff here and then uh, you want to color the um, uh, terms in using continuous data meaning using the significance level in the deck. You can also choose binary, but the unit uh, continuous is a better option. Uh, well, you can download the result. Uh, yeah, I will I actually downloaded the result on my I can use that as well, but uh, let me try so yesterday I found sometimes I submit the first time it did not work and I submit a set time, second time. So, I can show you the result I got here, but I hope uh, yeah I also got the result. So, maybe let us use this. 
So do most of you um, get your results back like this? So in this report at the very top, I mean, some of you might have used the old version of the webcast dot before, uh, but I think this new uh, version is much improved on the user interface. The results are much simpler, much easier to understand, and easy to browse. So at the very top, you see the job summary. If you expand this, this basically will remind you about all the parameters you used, or I mean, what you did for this analysis. Uh, you can expand and read this, but you can also close it. I hope today's session was useful where you got a brief idea about web gstart. Dr. Bing Jiang discussed about different type of input ID and how the three methods are different from each other. In conclusions, when we do not have a statistical value with the gene list, we can do ORA, but if we have a statistical values like p value, we can go for GSEA. Lastly, he also described briefly about the job summary, how it looks like and what are the information we can obtain from it. In the next hands on session, we will learn more about the result visualization, protein protein interaction modules, pathway based method and network based methods. Thank you.